Hello guys, this is Cannibal Chess, and today I thought we'd go over the Daniel Dubolf and Anishikiri game from round 10 of the FIDE World Rapid Championship. And Anish has the white pieces, so he starts the game with the ready opening, which is just moving the knight to f3. Dubolf responds by just striking in the center of the board with d5. And here Anish decides to fianchetto his light square bishop on g2. Dubolf decides to do the same with his dark square bishop on g7. So they both fianchetto. And here it changes from a ready opening to a king's Indian attack fianchetto, double fianchetto variation. Where both black and white decide to fianchetto their bishops. And here, Anish continues with d4, just putting pressure of his own on the center of the board, also stopping Dewolf's dark square bishop from having just unlimited range on the longest diagonal in the game. Dewolf responds by just bringing his knight out to f6, just continuing development, also making it to where he can castle soon if he wanted to. And here Anish plays c4, just asking Dubolf, well, do you want to take my pawn, or do you want me to take yours, or do I want to play something like c5 in the future? Just different ideas here. And instead of taking, Dubolf just decides to simply play c6. And he's inviting Anish to actually take here. He doesn't really mind if Anish takes, and Anish does indeed take. So Dubolf retakes, and now the structure is kind of the same for both players at this point, which is pretty interesting. And Anish continues by bringing his other knight out to c3, just hitting this pawn, putting a little bit more pressure on the center of the board as well. And he also doesn't want any ideas of the queen coming over and just checking the king and stuff uh, later on in the game. So he doesn't really want any to have to worry about any checks and like moving the bishop over here or something like that. So he just moves his knight out. And here, Dubolf just simply castles. The computer's saying knight here would have been more accurate, just hitting hitting Anisha's pawn also, but um, castling here is fine as well. And Anish decides to play this move knight to e5, just centralizing his knight on e5, creating an outpost, and Dubolf doesn't really have a way of kicking away the knight at this point. He could try something like knight to c6, and then maybe see if Anish wants to, to uh, do a trade on, on c6. But other than that, there isn't really too much of a way of kicking away this knight right now, because the bishop's cramped with this knight in front of it. This pawn can't come forward to threaten the knight because the knight's there. And so Dubol finds this interesting move, and he goes knight e4. And it looks like this kind of, this might lose a pawn, because if you take the knight and then and then Dubol free takes, then Anish can just pick up the pawn for free. And it is actually a free pawn in a way. But Dubolf still favors or likes this position quite a bit because it kind of frees up his bishop here. And it also it takes away the the defense of the king side kind of. Kind of it takes away these this knight and this this bishop from from this area. Kind of hindering the light square bishop to come coming to, to h3. So that is the point of this move. So after it takes takes. Then Anish retakes, and now his light square bishop is on e4. And so instead of going bishop h3 immediately, Dubolf decides to get more pieces off the board, and he moves his knight out to c6. And here Anish decides to trade again, and just he kind of wants to damage Dubolf's pawn structure here, so now he has he has like three pawn islands. Anish only has two. So he kind of, he likes his position here. And he could take this pawn. It's kind of a free pawn. It's not the best move though. After something like rook b8, then, then Dubolf's position here is actually fine, even though he has two pawns down, but his pieces are a little bit more active. This rook's um, very active now, and these bishops could get active very quickly. So, and also this would kind of be undefending this central pawn. So. He doesn't want to, to just go for this pawn and not defend this central pawn. So he just brings his bishop up to e3 to defend this pawn twice. 
against Dubolf's double attack on the pawn. And here, Dubolf continues by playing bishop h3, so now Anish doesn't have a way to castle kingside, and you don't want to castle queenside if you do something like, like queen, queen b3 or something like that, think you're going to castle, and then you castle queenside, then you're kind of on, the king's on this open c file, or semi-open c file, so it'd be pretty dangerous to castle queenside as well, especially because this dark square bishop is hitting the queenside, and the rook could just simply come to b8 as well, and just hit, hit this pawn on b2 very easily. So there's really no way for Anish to castle at this point, and so I don't really see why this is an, an, an accuracy. This actually seems like a very a very decent idea, just to keep the, the king in the center of the board. It makes a lot of sense. And here Anish decides to just make a way for his king to manually castle. He can just castle the king by bringing it up to f2, and then the rook can come over, and then he's, he's thinking that his position is going to be fine here after that. And... Dubolf does this interesting move where he does he, he goes for this this pawn on b2, but that's not the only idea of this move because of course the obvious thing to do if you're Anish is to just simply move the pawn up. You know, now there's no attack on, on the b2 pawn because it's protected by the a2 pawn. And here Dubolf's idea is to actually bring the rook down to b4, which is the best move. And now he's triple attacking this central pawn on d4. So what does Anish do here? Well, he actually just ignores it. He just simply moves his king to f2. He wants to manually castle as, fa as fast as possible. So he kind of ignores this attack on the pawn. And instead of instead of just going for the, the pawn immediately here, um, Dubolf doesn't do that. He instead finds one of the best moves in the position, which is actually f5. And the idea of this move is, well, the bishop can't take the pawn because then it would get captured. So the bishop has to move. And so Anish moves his bishop to c6, just grabs the pawn on c6, it's, it's undefended. So there's really no point in not grabbing it. But here, Dubolf has this move, and he can move the pawn down again to f4. And the computer is now liking this move taking on, on d4 and then pinning the bishop to the king, but the idea that Dubolf found is also very strong. So he pushes f4, and the idea here is to break open the, the king's the king side here. You can't really take, if you take with the bishop, it's not too good for, for white after bishop takes d4, and then you have to run back with the bishop to to protect the king, or actually not even, that wouldn't even be the best move, the best move is something like pawn to e3 or something like that, but it's still a rough position for, for white after that, because now this, this whole rank is exposed, and, and the rooks are coming down, and the queen's also eyeing this queen, so it would just kind of be a dangerous position to, to take with the bishop here, and just, and just stop defending this pawn. So instead, Anish takes with the pawn, and this opens up opens up attack ideas for for Dubolf here on h4 and g5 as well, because now this file's semi-open, and this one's not really too open, but there are squares for the queen to jump to if she needed to later. And here, Dubolf finds the best move. He gives up another pawn. And what this does is this just makes it to where his queen can now come to this square when it needs to to check the king. So Anish takes the pawn. There's really nothing else to do here. You don't want to not take the pawn because then there's more pressure coming to this pawn. Or even, I don't think you would take that one. You'd want to take the central pawn. But it would be kind of, it'd be even worse to not take the pawn here. So he takes the pawn. Best move. And here, instead of trading queens, Dubolf just goes on the offensive, goes all out, and he plays queen h4 check. And here, Anish, he has to move to g1. There's really no other move because this bishop's slicing these squares, and the queen is slicing those squares. So there's only one move that the king can go to, and that is g1. And here, Dubolf continues by capturing the pawn on f4, and... This kind of seems like it'd be a bad idea, you know, you're you're letting Anish take your rook for the bishop. But it's actually not 
it's not the best move for Anish to take the the rook, even though it's a trade in his favor. After after queen takes bishop, then now there's really no defense on the king side, and so this bishop's hitting these squares, the queen's hitting these, so the king is getting more and more exposed. And here Anish he tries to he tries to play d5 just to attack Dubolf's king here. But there's really no there's really no point in doing this after the king moves, then you don't really have any more attacks on Black's king. So there's really no point in moving the queen here. The computer is saying better would have been queen queen c1. The idea being that you're asking Black to trade queens. The queen has to move if if Dubolf doesn't want to trade, and it can't move to any squares that threaten that threaten the king. You can take the pawn. But you can't really go here now because the queen's guarding the c-file, so there's no idea of checking the king and then picking up the bishop, stuff like that. It's just a safer move because it's guarding all of these dark squares. Now it's guarding the g5 square as well. So there's really there's nowhere that the the black queen can, can get at the king at that point. So that would have been a better move, but Anish plays queen d5. Dubolf moves the king over to h8, and here uh, Anish continues by, by trying to push the black queen back by bringing it closer to it. So he's assuming here that Dubolf doesn't want to trade queens, which would be a correct assumption because, yes, Dubolf is down a lot of pawns and also uh, down a trade. So without this attack on, without these kind of attacks on the on the king, then Dubolf's position is basically lost here. So any other move besides the one that Dubolf finds is actually, it makes it to where Anish is winning the game. If Dubolf tries to just play something like h6, just a passive queen move where he just moves the queen back, then, then Anish is completely winning here. But Dubolf finds the only move that he needed to find to continue continue this, this offensive strike on the king. He goes queen g5. So now the king has to move. He goes f2. And now Dubolf brings his rook down into the game to kick the queen away and also get closer to the king as well. Now everything on this rank is cut off, so the king doesn't really have too much too many places to go now. And so after the queen moves, then Dubolf continues the attack by going queen h4 check. And here, here Anish actually brings his king out into the open a little bit more, and it's actually the best move in this position. If you play something like king g1 here, then it's actually a mate in 17. I don't know if Dubolf would have actually found that or not, but it's actually it's just a way worse position now for, for white because this rook is, is down to where it can actually hit this g file as well. So it's actually a very dangerous dangerous uh, position if you play king g1. So you kind of have to go king e3 here. And Dubolf just decides to bring his his rook back to the 8th rank because he just wants to defend he just wants to defend against any attacks that that Anish would try and throw at the king here so he has to defend the 8th rank to defend the king. And Anish he he tries to to put pressure on the rook to where I think the, the bishop can't move. He's thinking now the bishop can't really move. He also still wants to defend this pawn as well. And the computer's saying something like rook rook to f1 would have been a little bit more accurate, just keeping keeping this this diagonal safe. And also just defending this this pawn, just different ideas like this. You want to keep the queen away from, from the, the dark squares right now because that's the squares that the king's on. So those are the ideas in this position. Also, if if now Dubolf tried to go for something like queen g5, then you can actually just push the pawn and you're I think you're fine here as well because then there's two defenders on the pawn and also that pawn is defending this pawn. So it'd be a fine position for Anish still here. And it's actually... It'd still be a drawing position if he had found rook f1, but he doesn't go rook f1. He goes queen c5, and this is actually a it's a very damaging move for for Anish here because it allows 
it allows for the queen to come back to f4. So the king goes back, obviously, you know, you don't want to go too far out in the open and then get checked by the rook. So king goes back to f2. Here, Dubolf continues by just playing queen h4 again, just checking the king. So Nish goes back out. And then here, Dubol finds this queen g5 move. And and the computer here is saying, well, you just... And he should have just continued playing king f2 and then king e3. There's really no reason to move super far out into the center of the board because you're fine here. Um, Dubolf doesn't really have any any real way of getting at your king. If you try something like, after, after you move here, if you just try something like this, then you just go back and there's there's really no... There's really no move that he can do that's going to, like, you know, take take out your king. So so there's really no reason to to go completely out outside of this, this the defense of this uh, f3 pawn. But here Anish does, and I believe, I was looking at the game, and I believe he was, he was pretty low on time at this point. I think he had, like, 16 seconds at this point, so he wasn't really... He didn't really have time to think, and Dubolf had like quite a bit more time than him. So, so Dubolf was up on time, and he he was kind of in a time scramble. So he didn't really have time to to just think. Well, I can just go, go and move back, and I think he might have been trying to win this game as well. He didn't really want to draw. I think that might have been what it was. But okay, he goes he goes King D three, which is a mistake. He should have stayed going King F two. Here, Dubolf continues the attack with rook d8, and he brings his king over to c4. And, of course, Dubolf continues. Bishop to e6, taking out this diagonal, so the king has to move over again. And I think Anish is trying to get his king over to something like a6, just seeking shelter by this, this pawn on a7. You know, because the rook can't really can't really make any progress on that on that file at that point because you can't really take your own piece. So there's no real way of moving this pawn at that point. I think that's what Anish was was trying to go for by moving his king all the way across the board. But Dubolf continues by attacking Anish's queen here, just trying to get her off of this this diagonal so he can have this this whole entire um, diagonal reaching to a three. So the queen has to move. Queen moves to to c3. The computer is actually saying here that you should just go ahead and take the bishop for the queen. That there's really no other option. After rook takes, this is your best option as as white, which just shows how desperate the situation actually is for a niche here. And I'm sure he realized that in the game as well. But he didn't want to give up his queen that easily. He he might have been thinking that maybe Dubolf would have. Um, kind of messed up in this attack at some point, but he actually doesn't. And so after queen c3, he continues by bringing his rook over to the b file, attacking the king. And the king can't go here or here because these squares are blocked off by the dark square and light square bishops. So he can only go to the, the a file. And after he moves his king to the a file, then then Dubolf, he, he creates his battery, and he's also threatening checkmate in one on a3. So to defend this, Anish has to push a3, and now um, Dubolf cannot take the pawn because then rook takes, here I'll just show it to you, rook takes, and then bishop takes, and then king takes, and then Anish would kind of, his position would be a little bit better here, I would think. I think it'd be a little bit more of a... Uh, Actually, no, it'd be, it'd be much better for Anish here because he has a queen. He has a, a queen, and then Dubolf is just down a lot of material. So, so he defends with a3, and here Dubolf decides to take this b3 pawn. And you kind of have, if, you, if you're playing as white here, you kind of have to take the bishop at this point. If you try something like king to a5, then it's actually a mistake, and then it's also a checkmate in two after... Queen, queen check on c7, and then there's no other place to go but a6, and then here you just have a mate in one after after um, queen to b6 checkmate. So so you don't want to go up, so you have to you have to take the bishop and Anish takes. Dubolf takes with the rook, and each takes back, and then here Dubolf ends the game after this check on e6. Forking the king and the bishop, and here, Anish just resigns the game 
because you're going to lose the bishop no matter where you go after you move, then you're just going to lose the bishop, and then Dubolf here is completely winning because he has a queen and a bishop for two rooks. So that was basically the entire game here. And interestingly, actually right right here, the computer saying that, that Dubolf had a force mate in 17 um, without even having to to give up the, the bishop and the rook for the queen, which is kind of interesting. I wonder if, yeah, I guess, I think he was just too low on time at this point because Dubolf didn't really have that much time left either. But it's kind of interesting to wonder if he would have actually been able to find this this mate in 17 if it were just like, if he had like, you know, something like 30 minutes left or something. I wonder if he would have actually stopped and, and tried to find this mate in 17. But yeah, that was the, the game. Daniel Dubolf and Anish Giri, round 10 of the FIDE World Rapid Chess Championship in Kazakhstan. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider subscribing to the channel, and have a nice day. Thanks.